Emmanuel Macron goes after the UK's fisheries, the mainstream media spread fake news about Brexit, and we talk about the latest from the Labour leadership election. Well, hello everyone and welcome to another show. Before we start, over the last couple of days, we had a lot of comments from some of you guys complaining about my big hair. So I've got a haircut now, so stop complaining. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the show because we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, firstly, uh, the European Union and France. So as you know, uh, end of this week on Friday, we'll be leaving. We'll stop being a member of the European Union, but during the next 11 months, during the transition period, uh, both sides will negotiate a trade deal. Now, during this 11 months, we're still kind of tied to certain aspects of the European Union, including the fisheries. Uh, so uh, we still keep the current arrangements uh, uh, with the, with the Euro European Union when it comes to UK waters until December 2020. Now, after that, you either have a trade deal where you can't be some sort of new ar arrangements when it comes to fishing, uh, or you just leave on WTO terms and nothing will happen in terms of uh, the EU having access to UK's waters. So France have new demands. Yes, Emmanuel Macron has now demanded uh, that the EU should have access to UK fishing waters for the next 25 years after Brexit. Now, 25 is very specific. I, don't, <laughs> I do wonder what sort of uh, measurement they were trying to use. But at the same time, what's happening is that obviously uh, if this doesn't happen. This is a demand coming from France and they said if they don't give it to us then we won't give them a free trade agreement. Fine, don't give it to us. Now the situation is because the priority for the UK is uh, the financial sector and services uh, which is obviously our largest export industry and biggest corporate tax generator as opposed to fisheries. Uh, so the, the European Union want to use that against us to say well if you want to uh, secure and uh, essentially keep your financial sector safe then give us your fisheries and well we're not actually completely giving up but they, they will have more say in terms of the the access to UK waters but also the regulations that they will impose onto us just like how they've been doing uh, when we were a member of the uh, European bloc but there are sources from three international banks that say that access will now depend on a trade-off uh, such as Britain allowing fishing in, in its waters. Uh, so they think that obviously the UK government won't just easily budge. One bank has told uh, Reuters that we are now hearing very explicitly that it's not even the, uh, the rumour mill, that the European Commission has said that these are politically linked to progress in the phase two of, of the negotiations. Now, uh, the, it, it is true that the fishing industry is not as big. It's 169 times smaller than the financial services, uh, and also it employs just 8,000 people as a, compared, compared to uh, over a million in uh, finance, but that's all irrelevant. It is irrelevant, and it's coming from me, who is not a protectionist. I'm not a protectionist, I'm a free trader, but when it comes to the UK uh, waters and UK fishing, the reason I want the UK government to be strong on this is that when it comes to the phase two of negotiations for the trade deal, is that well, firstly, it's not going to be in a mutual agreement, a, a mutual recognition of our standards when they have access to our UK waters and when they impose um, new directives and regulations when it comes to fishing. That's one issue. Two, they are going to be using this against us. This is not a friendly neighbour. Uh, in any uh, trade negotiations, negotiations, obviously you have some tough situations. One person, one side wants something more. But the way they are treating this whole uh, trade talks uh, it's it's come coming ridiculous now. Uh, they they we're not their enemies. <laughs> we, we were literally uh, their partners until well until Friday, and we still want to remain friends uh, with Europe. Well, not the EU itself or European countries, but the European Union. If they want to use this against us, then I I personally would say, and if they would not budge, I'd say fine, just walk away. The interesting thing is we don't really hear anything about this in the mainstream media, so it's up to channels like this and other. Brexiteers to actually uh, <laughs> raise awareness because otherwise the government won't be held to account when it comes to this area. Now, speaking of the mainstream media and fake news, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of you may have heard over the last few months since the government have introduced this new settlement scheme for the uh, EU citizens. So obviously, if you're an EU citizen already living in the UK, uh, then uh, you have the right to stay. All you have to do is just go online, fill out a quick form, and uh, that's it. Uh, and some people have complained 
and they went to the media, some Europeans, saying that, well, this system doesn't work, they've rejected us, they hate us, this is inhumane. Uh, it, <laughs> now, we found out what the actual problem was for the majority of these people, uh, because everybody else who have just used the settlement form, it's worked, it's easy. Uh, and uh, we've discovered what the issue is. There is a Michelin star, very famous, apparently, chef, who has fallen into this trap and has gone to uh, the uh, the Metro and other uh, papers. So he's been denied a post-Brexit residency after 23 years of living in the UK. So the headline, you would look at it and be like, oh my God, what did the government do? This is really unfair. But not really, because the 47-year-old chef who... <laughs> Well, you you would think they would be smart, but you know, but at this stage of his life, uh, he, he's basically called the system inhumane because he's received a rejection letter, and uh, but in reality, what happened is that he mistakenly applied for permanent residency instead of using the EU settlement scheme. Now, permanent residency is not a scheme that these people should be using. This is a scheme for uh, general, obviously, migrants who stay in this country and want to get a permanent residency, uh, it doesn't apply for the EU citizens because EU citizens already have extra rights compared to other non-EU citizens, which has always been unfair. That's why we voted leave. Uh, but this guy uh, has now obviously complained and said, I've been in England for 23 years uh, and today they have sent me this letter. I have, um, you know, I love Britain. Uh, I consider it until today like home, uh, but they just told me after 23 years of tax paid, VAT paid, I'm not welcome. Okay, no, this is not true. It's not true because he made a mistake and that's fine. We're all humans, sometimes we make mistakes. But when we make a mistake, we just keep it quiet and correct it. Like, he's gone to the media. He knew he made a mistake. Someone told him he should have done something else and he completely ignored it. He went to the left-wing press and, uh, and they actually <laughs> published his idiotic story and he's now blaming the government for a mistake he made. Because they, the government spent a lot of money on promoting this campaign of the EU uh, settlement scheme. And it's everywhere. It's literally all over the place. Even when you go online to the website, it's the biggest thing that you see. Uh, so don't say that the government haven't been giving advice to people because it's been very obvious since day one. Now, a government spokesperson from Home Office has said that this guy has not applied for to the EU settlement scheme. He made an application for, for a permanent residence document, something which EU citizens living in the UK are not required or encouraged to do. His application for permanent residence was not successful because he did not provide sufficient evidence to show that he met the criteria. And obviously over 2.5 million people, uh, EU citizens have already been granted the right to stay. It's free, there's plenty of support available online, on the phone or in person, and EU citizens and their families have until the 30th of June 2021 to apply. Obviously, the system isn't perfect, like anything else, like uh, uh, the universal credit or any other, any other bureaucratic thing you get from the government, but any government in the West. The problem that sometimes there are issues, it's not because of the politicians, and I'm not a big fan of politicians myself, it's because the system is bureaucratic. Blame the bureaucrats not the inhumanity of a, a democratically elected government. <laughs> so, this guy is absolutely ridiculous. But um, we just wanted to expose this fake news that we've been hearing over the, the, the last few months from the mainstream media that the government is re rejecting the EU citizens. It's not true. Uh, and uh, some people who made a mistake in their form, they, they can correct it. They have ages, they've got months to fix this and it should be fine. Now, let's move on to the Labour Party because um, it's been pretty quiet until the last couple of days, I had a number of hustings for the Labour leadership, but also deputy uh, uh, leader elections. We have a clip of uh, Dawn Butler, who's running for deputy uh, leader against uh, our favourite Labour politician, Richard Bergen and Angela Rayner. And we have a clip of her <laughs> making a speech or a singing it while using a lyrics of a song uh, at an event. Let's just watch this because I don't know. This is a warning. We have, we're going to have Dawn Butler on your screens in a minute. We're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do it anyway. 
But that is seriously one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in politics. And I've seen a lot of things. Um, my favourite thing is when you look at Ian Murray and Richard Bergen's faces. I should just go back to the clip because you can see they're so confused and like, what on earth is going on? Uh, because, <laughs> because people... I always expected uh, Richard Bergen to be the crazy one. And even Richard Bergen is now thinking, what is going on here? Uh, but it's, it's not the only place, because uh, for the actual main leadership election hustings, we have uh, uh, Emily Thornberry saying random things about the SNP. I hate the SNP. <laughs> I hate the SNP. I think they're Tories wrapped up in nationalist clothing. I think they pretend to be on the left, and they're not on the left. They're not on the left. They're not. <laughs> so the SNP are not on the left. The SNP are Tories uh, with a bit of nationalistic uh, elements. Sure, Emily. Uh, this is a big problem, and this is exactly why people are abandoning Labour in Scotland. When they say ridiculous stuff like this, the SNP, just because they're not as left-wing as Labour these days, they're Tories. Basically, they're Tories. <laughs> and uh, we're going to actually talk about this. In the next couple of days, we're going to have a video um, talking about the SNP, but also the, the left-wing parties in Wales and uh, what they've actually been doing over the last few years and over the last couple of decades uh, to try to destroy uh, the union, uh, to make sure that their, their part of the, the country is actually completely controlled and uh, turn into a communist utopia. And we're going to talk about that in the, in the uh, next... Uh, well. In the next few days. Now, Remainers. Do you remember Remainers? Uh, the last couple of years, uh, they've been complaining about Brexiteers being nostalgic, uh, Brexiteers being quite eccentric, uh, caring about pointless things and symbolism, uh, like the blue passports, and now the Big Ben bonging and all that stuff. We just kept quiet. You know, Brexiteers are different. Some Brexiteers care about that, some Brexiteers don't care about that. And we have some Remainers kicking off about a coin. Yeah, so we have some top <laughs> Remainers, including Andrew Adonis, uh, saying that I am never using or accepting this new coin. As you know, uh, the government have released, are releasing the new Brexit 50p coins, which says peace, prosperity and friendship with all nations. And it's a very positive message. Uh, but Remainers, uh, including Adonis, uh, Alistair Campbell, and obviously, Heseltine and other senior Remainers are now saying that they're going to be sulking. They're not going to be using 50p coins. Not sure what they're going to be doing with them if they if someone gives them change, but <laughs> God knows. Uh, and then you have someone like this saying, anyone else, does anyone else want to heat up one of those new 50p pieces until it's red hot and then press it into Nidrofraja's face? Hmm. But it's okay. We're going to focus on our uh, celebrations this Friday. As you know, we have Parliament Square in London and one of the main parties is going to be here. But don't forget about the North and the Midlands and other places because we have parties everywhere. Uh, we have, thanks to the Conservative MP Andrew Jenkins and uh, Lucy Harris, the Conservative MEP, uh, there is a, if you're near Yorkshire and the North in general, there's a big party in Morley. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, there's going to be like some singers around there's going to be drinks and everything and the, the details the phone number and the email address if you want to get your tickets for that it's only five pounds per adult and under tw under 12 are free to go uh, make sure you check it out and obviously if, the, if i see more uh, events like this i'll definitely promote this in this channel so you guys are away if you can't make it to london and in terms of our own side obviously we are now running out of uh, the UK independence t-shirts that we've made for you guys. Make sure you check out the link in the description. We still have some left. The UK independence day, 31st of January, 2020. Uh, there are also various designs, but check, check out the link in the description, get your t-shirts, be ready for Friday. And as I said, if you enjoy the content, uh, make sure you subscribe and click on the bell next to it so you get notified. We have a video coming out every day at 5.45 p.m. And leave a comment in the comment section saying if you like my haircut or not. Otherwise, I'm not going to make it this short again. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm Maya Tusi, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.